People can get married without flirting in this day. Isn't it very short time to know a person without flirting, just have a conversation two or three times? It seems to be very risky. <laughs> you shouldn't get married without talking, but you can get married without flirting. There's a difference between the two. Some people, unfortunately, they pray and they observe the outward aspects of religion, but their character is awful. Well, it comes up with the popular question, is Umar Suleiman married? All right, is Omar Suleiman married? Yes, alhamdulillah, happily married. I got married young, alhamdulillah, going on 15 years of marriage to a wonderful woman who I am missing because I'm traveling right now. I miss my family most when I travel. Um, but you know, my wife, alhamdulillah, is very private, but at the same time, not in our community. If you come to my community, my masjid, she's very active in our masjid. And that was the same thing in New Orleans when I was in Louisiana, while I was the imam there. But this is a lesson for people. Just because people don't post pictures of their marriage all the time, doesn't mean they're not happily married. Uh, we're a private family, alhamdulillah, I mean, but she's actually one of my teacher's daughters. Uh, so I married my sheikh's daughter and uh, 15 years in February, inshallah ta'ala, coming up, we would have been married for 15 years and we have three kids, alhamdulillah, ameen. And may Allah bless her, she is the most supportive wife that a person could have. So uh, that's something that I'm blessed with, alhamdulillah. I could not do anything that I do without her support, alhamdulillah. So make dua for her, inshallah, and I tell people to make dua for my family all the time. Do you think people can get married without flirting in this day? How are people supposed to meet if they don't flirt? And can you get married without flirting? Yes, you can get married without flirting. How is that possible? Marriage, <laughs> you know, you shouldn't get married without talking but you can get married without flirting. There's a difference between the two. Islam does not prohibit people from talking before getting married. In fact, it encourages that we talk before we get married. You ask important questions. You know, your favorite color is not going to affect whether or not we have a good marriage, right? You ask important questions about deen, about character, about likes and dislikes, about priorities, about vision of a family, about, you know, uh, career. Those are questions that you want to ask. And you also see if your character lines up. Plus, I think the word flirting has multiple connotations. It can mean many things, right? You don't have to talk rough and, and just business-like, but at the same time, you, you can't transgress. You can't go past, you know, the, the things that Islam has barred. Why? Because look, if you go there, I'd say it's actually risky to be romantic before getting married. Why? Because when you do that, you lose your mind. At that point, you're not going to see any of the flaws of a person because you want that person to be perfect. Marriage is a decision that you want to make with your full senses. You want to make sure that you're thinking properly when you get married, right? And love is very blinding. Sometimes you get attracted to the idea of someone and so you're not thinking properly about who that person really is. You know, someone comes to me, I give these examples all the time, you know. Let's just say I have many funny stories of people that really wanted their, the person they wanted to marry to be the right person. So, uh, Sheikh, I prayed istikhara and I saw this dream. And in this dream, she was wearing a white dress. I said, that has nothing to do with your istikhara. That's because you were thinking about her before you went to sleep. You know, or someone says, yeah, she doesn't do any of the things that are Islamic, but she told me she loves Surah Al-Rahman. MashaAllah, that's not going to save your marriage, you know. <laughs> you have to think about priorities. So in Islam, it's okay to talk before getting married. But, you know, the Prophet ﷺ prohibited khalwa, which is to be alone together. That doesn't mean that you have to sit and talk with like two people sitting right next to you and looking at both of you the whole time like that. No, but that you're not alone together to where the talking can take a direction that's not uh, proper. And I think that there's so much wisdom in that. Why? Because you get to know a person the way you should get to know a person without rushing towards other things. You know, look, talk to a person under the halal guidelines, inshallah ta'ala, but ask important questions and look for their deen and their character always, religion and character. The first thing the Prophet ﷺ said, if someone comes to you whose religion and character is pleasing to you, then marry that person. Isn't it a very short time to know a person without flirting, just have a conversation two or three times? It seems to be very <laughs> risky. It doesn't have to be just two or three times. Um, Islam does not, you know, if you realize the wisdom of the Sharia, it doesn't say you can only talk two, three times per se. It says what you can't do, not what you have to do, what you can't do. Because that keeps us within the bounds of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It keeps us talking in ways that are important. Look, some people are going to need more conversation. As long as they don't transgress the halal or, you know, and go into the haram by becoming physically intimate and speaking, you know, getting romantic with their language and uh, being alone together, as long as they're not then they can ask questions, they can talk. And I think, by the way, one thing that's very important in marriage is to ask about the person before you marry them. To other people. To people that know the person well, okay? And with all of that, 
Here's the thing, with all of that, it's always gonna be a risk. Marriage is a risk, okay? Because a person can misrepresent themselves over 20 times or over 100 times. And so that's where your trust in Allah comes, the intention to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you get married and praying istikhara properly. And inshallah ta'ala, you know, we, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us righteous and good spouses.